Hi everyone, welcome to the first part on how to acquire auditory evoke potentials, also known as ABRs, using the Active 2 from Biosemi. Now, 20 years ago, Biosemi introduced the first commercially available active electrode for EEG measurements. These electrodes allow an incredibly fast EEG setup, whether for 32, 64, or up to 256 channels, offer very low noise whilst recording EEG data, offer a respectable endurance for years to come, and are simple to keep clean. A few years ago, Biosemi took the design a step further and came out with a special three ABR electrode set specifically made for ABR measurements. These electrodes attach practically to the same way as in a standard ABR setup, namely on the left, on the right mastoids. The third electrode, the reference, is either placed on location ZZ when no cap is used, or an FPZ if the ABR is collected together with a 32, 64 or 128 channel EEG. To give some more information on these ABR electrodes, to easily distinguish between them, they are conveniently labeled as R, A, L, A and REF, Whereas the acquired file, however, will produce five signals. Three signals will be called L-MON, REF and R-MON. These channels are not referenced, not filtered and not amplified. Whereas the other two signals that will show up are called left and right. These channels are bipolar and ready to analyze. A filter of 100 to 3 kHz has been applied. They are referenced to REF and they are even amplified. Since the electrode design comes with an integrated 5-wire instead of the 2-wire EEG electrode design, the extra wires serve to amplify the signals by around 50%, whereas the other 50% amplification is done inside the ADC box by the ABR module itself. Going this way, the manufacturer avoided having to make a larger electrode housing the ABR electrodes are not different from the standard EEG flat or pin electrode housings. When getting an Active 2 with ABR, or ABR is added at the later stage, the system will add an ABR module inside the Active 2, which is installed on the motherboard. The location, however, where the ABR module is mounted depends on the number of channels installed. With a 64-channel EEG system, the location is somewhere in the middle of the motherboard, between 121 and 128. Or for a 128-channel EEG system, the ABR board will be fitted in the last slot on the motherboard, allowing acquisition also of the 128 other channels of EEG. The setting is done in the config file, which I will show you in the next video. When setting up an ABR, the ABR electrode set are mounted to the front plate called ABR. If only an ABR is collected without EEG, then also an auxiliary CMS DRL electrode set flat should be connected to the system. First, make sure to cleanse the site with some abrasive paste, even though the electrodes are active. The two flat electrodes for the ABRs, labeled LA and RA, are placed on the left and to the right mastoid. For that, use some double-sided stickies and some EC2 plus cream. The reference electrode is best placed on ZZ using EC2 Plus cream available from our stores. Use a cotton ball to attach the ZZ electrode on the scalp to make sure it stays in place. 
When a cap is also used, then place the reference electrode on FPZ on the front of the head because there's no space to put it where the cap is. Biosame's website now offers the latest ActiV version 901 that includes some great enhancements and is very useful in acquiring ABRs. Download the software and after having set up the subject, launch the software and run the ABR as shown in our next movie. When doing an ABR, stimulation can be performed by using either a dedicated evoked potential system, a sound box, or the most cost-effective solution is to use a PC running presentation or E-Prime. A click of up to 100 dB normal hearing level is typically used as it contains all the harmonics of that sound to stimulate the entire surface of the cochlea and so generates an ABR response including the expected waveforms 1 to 5. The click sound from a dedicated sound box can be output to either stand standard headphones such as these or tubal insert earphones via the line out of a PC. Simultaneously a trigger is provided through the LPT or USB port and trigger interface such as the MMBTS and fed into the USB receiver port on the Active2 system. These triggers then sent to the Active2 are merged with the acquired EEG ABR traces that we're acquiring. Many users wish to use an ERP and run paradigms on their PCs with installed Windows or Macs may run into sync delays between the sent trigger and the actual stimulus presented to the subject caused by graphic or sound cards even as presentation or E-Prime may offer dedicated modes such as the exclusive mode on presentation. These modes may or may not minimize such delays, always depending on the PC specifications used. The trigger sent arrive earlier than the stimulation presented, which may be neglectable with long latency responses such as visual evoked potentials, P300 and other cognitive tasks. Delays above one millisecond or more are definitely not acceptable when doing short latency response measurements such as ABRs or mid latency responses. Such delays are mostly caused by Windows, PC hardware and the actual stimulation programs used and can be as long as 5 to 50 milliseconds. Due to these issues, Neurospec in cooperation with Biosemi have recently introduced a new possibility to overcome such delays by stimulus onset triggering or one-shot triggering using the front end ergo input of the Active2 EEG system. The ergo input combination with the optical ergo adapter and an updated version 901 available from us or the Biosemis website would allow a very accurate timing between stimulus and trigger. The idea offers a split line out of the PC or notebook to the headphone of the subject and the other channel to the ergo input of the Active2 via the optical ergo isolator. The connection due to the optical adapter would be safe for the subject. ActiveView version 901 and corresponding config file offers an incredibly variety of incoming triggers. These can include variable trigger length in milliseconds, 
the trip level in millivolts, an advanced window or level triggering, and the possibility of a polarity level, such as positive edge or negative edge. Since the ergo channels offer coupled triggering, two triggers can be maximally acquired and with zero delay, along with the evoked potential, in our case, one for the ABR. The trigger created by the click arrives at the ergo channel one. It shows up as a brown dot in the high byte section or as a decimal marker. This marker is then collected in full sync with the auditory evoke potential. When using a PC and presentation, etc., triggering this way would ensure practically no synchronization discrepancies between the heard sound and the triggered event. In the BESA analysis software, as an example, an average of the ABR around these received triggers 256 can then be comfortably achieved without having to compensate for a possible delay, as there is none. To finalize the training, we would also acquire an ABR by using a dedicated evoke potential system by EMS Biomedical in Austria. We will then compare the results using the same subject, the same electrode location, but different stimulation method to show that presentation or E-prime and our one-shot triggering idea would deliver similar results, however, on a lower budget. Obviously, spending money for a dedicated ABR stimulator would be always a preferred choice, as creating sounds, clicks or bursts would be much easier to do. Additionally, the sounds would be calibrated, whereas stimulus programs do not normally offer that. We do hope you liked this video. Should there be any additional questions in the meantime, please let us know. All the mentioned hardware or software, along with the additional accessories or even the Evoke Potential System from EMS can be found online on neurospec.com or on our shop, which is www.shop.neurospec.com. Give us a like, subscribe to our channel, Thank you again for watching and see you very soon again. Thank you.